Howdy. How you doing? I'm doing alright. How about yourself? Hanging in there, man. Cool. It's a hot one. Hot one today. Cell phone charger back there if you need one. Yep. Oh, man. That um, got, seat got a, got a collection in the armrest of all kinds. Uh, of sorry, yeah, stuff. my kid stashes candy. I was gonna stuff say you there. got the hand buzzer and everything in there. <laughs> oh man, I gotta, I gotta clean that out. That's <laughs> if she has candy that you want, help yourself. I'm to all it. set on okay. the candy, but I appreciate the offer. <laughs> yeah, she'll usually stuff some snacks in there, so I gotta. Yeah, no, I mean, you gotta, yeah. Right. Always good to to start a savings account early. <laughs> exactly. That's it. She's a little hoarder. That's it. <laughs> Did you do anything fun with the uh, nice weather today? I'm just gonna go meet a buddy I haven't seen in a while. Okay. Uh, you know, have, have some lunch and kind of shoot the shit. Nice, yeah, that's yeah. good. Yourself? I mean, you're working today, but yeah. this weekend? Pretty much, that's what I've been doing. I've just been, yeah, driving around. This is actually like my hobby, what I do on my free time. I work in tech from home, nine to five. This place is really good talking. Yeah, and so, really nice. yeah. Nice to have it on the corner there. Yeah. But um, yeah, I work nine to five from home. I don't talk to people all day. So like, this is how I socialize. I do stand up comedy. So like, this is how I get material. You know? Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, I see. I noticed you're, uh, you're mic'd up here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, all right, every now and then I'll have a fun conversation. Like I actually have a show on YouTube with like people that I do interview where it's called getting in cars with strangers. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So I just, you know, have a chat, have a conversation. If it's a, if it's a good one, they want me to put it online. I'll put it online. That's funny. Yeah. I always, it's, it's along the, the vein of something that I always tell people why I shouldn't have kids because I wouldn't make a good parent. Cause one of the things I'll have to tell people is, uh, that if you never talk to strangers, uh, or if you don't talk to strangers, you'll never make new friends. That's yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I constantly run into situations where I'm yelling at people. <laughs> My mom was just in the hospital and, and, uh, she's fine now, but wheeling her away in this wheelchair in the emergency room uh -huh. the uh you know the nurse kind of uh, looks over her shoulder like you know don't worry we'll take good care of her and I, you know the only thing that i can talk to, think to yell to her was uh you know make sure you talk to strangers make sure you talk so, to strangers i always say that that a stranger is just a friend that you haven't made yet yeah that's yeah. a fair point yeah that's it like there are, you know everybody's a stranger at some point in time everybody's an unknown unwanted unknown thing um and you just kind of take the time to open yourself up to it and who knows what comes it's usually a good thing i think most people are good that's why i like doing this you get good conversations good people everybody has unique viewpoints you know yeah yeah people uh usually when people are being dicks it's because they're having a bad day right they're that's projecting it that's exactly it that's really exactly yeah. it we're all people we all have bad days and that can be that can be where it comes from we're uh, herd animals by nature so when it, you know, when, when you're having a good day and you're really feeling it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you want to hang out with your friends and you want to, like, kind of keep the party going. Like, that uh, that first beer you have, like, that buzz, that's how people get in trouble. They want to keep the party going. <laughs> that's very uh, true. But the same thing when things are going bad, right? You want to drag people in the mud with you and commiserate and all that stuff. So that's, right. That's so just like feel that. down, right? And that's yeah. exactly it. Just feel down. You have everything that goes in that stupid viewpoint. You don't want to feel alone while you also feel like trash. So you try to bring someone there with you. Right. It's true. Misery loves company, doesn't it? That's right. Yeah. It's true. Are you from Chicago here originally? Uh, I've been here long enough that I'm that I, I'm from Chicago now, but mm. um, I grew up in the East Coast. Oh, okay. Where about in the East Coast? Uh, New York. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. How about yourself? Uh, I grew up in California, actually. Okay. Another coast. Uh, yeah. We'll yeah. Brought you to Chicago. My daughter, so her mom is from here, and after her mom and I broke up, she came here with my daughter, so I came too. Okay. Yeah, right. I work in tech from home, so I can do that anywhere. Nice. What kind yeah. of tech are you in? Uh, I'm a cloud infrastructure engineer. Okay. Yeah. Um, work, work for anyone notable or have worked on any notable projects? Yeah, I've worked for the Illinois Housing Development Authority. I've worked for the CDC. I've worked for the Railroad Retirement Board, uh, which is like a government body. Um, and then CIBC Bank, which is like a yeah, huge, CIBC. yeah. Okay, yeah, those are some, those are some, <laughs> some, some good tags on your resume. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Malwarebytes. If you know tech companies, that's I, a big I tech do know company. Malwarebytes. Yeah. Now. So yeah, I worked for them for a while. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. I've got, I've got some decent names on the resume. For sure. Today. Yeah. What do you do nine to five? Uh, I am a, an engineer. I designed uh, lighting. Oh, okay, cool. Lighting engineer. Very cool. Yeah. This is a weird little market. Here in Chicago, where we've got kind of a bunch of lighting companies. Uh huh. Um, so it's like New York, LA, Chicago, 
Dallas area, mm -hmm. kind of the hubs for that stuff. So. Oh yeah, and I've seen a few like on the South Burbs. There was a big one like Fox Lighting or something like that. And there's a few that are pretty pretty great in that way. I actually had somebody who did the same thing, light engineering, as well. He was talking to me all about it, which it's a really interesting field. Okay. Do you do uh, residential or industrial? So we are commercial lighting or commercial. architectural lighting, they call it. But okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're a new company. We've, uh, we were uh, just recently acquired, but before that we were completely uh, family owned business for 25 years. Wow. And uh, they, uh, they're just totally vertical here in Chicago. So it's all the engineering, manufacturing, design, sales, customer service. I mean, cradle to grave, it all happens here in the city. So yeah, it's kind of kind of cool to have all that and to have all this manufacturing at my fingertips and stuff. I really appreciate building stuff. So nice. So to be a, a light engineer, is that a specific field of study, or do you have to study something and then you kind of adapt it into that? Good question. Um, there are people who study lighting. They go to engineering school to be a, a lighting designer or lighting engineer. Um, but it's few and far between. Most people, you know, will will have drinks and will kind of laugh about the fact, like, how the hell did we end up here? Um, because no one really knows how you end up in light. It's kind of, okay. Most people, anyway, you kind of apply for a job one day, um, and you're like, oh, I have manufacturing interests or experience. And sure. This is local and it's here. And I know, like to eat, so it's just it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, you know, some some things align, and you go for the interview, and you realize, oh, wait a second, this is. You know, a good blend of art and design. Sure. Um, you know, it's engineering, it's manufacturing. My two backgrounds are industrial design and, and engineering. Sure. So kind of, those are both lighting people. So yeah. that, those are the sectors that we generally pull from. Uh -huh. But yeah, we it's all and often, you know, it's a commonly heard thread where it's like, I don't know how I end up in this field, but once you're in it, you know, people generally stay. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. See, and that's, yeah, that makes sense. Cause I was like, I know there's industrial engineering, electrical engineering, mm -hmm. right. To IT engineering, but I've like light engineer, which yeah. it's something you absolutely, I mean, people don't realize how in the dark we are. If you don't have lights, if you don't have artificial light, once the sun goes down, you're done. So you can't see anything. Yeah. I so, mean, it's, it's one of those, it's everywhere. And it's, yeah. you know, if you do your job well, no one really notices your work. And, right. So we were just talking about that the other day that you know, the best jobs just, the space feels good but you have no idea why and it's because all the you know all the, the different branches of of that project came together well and they were designed and coordinated well by somebody sure and then um, there you go you it's it's a space you don't even think about it because you're thinking about what you're there to do as far as your job right so you're like oh i didn't even notice that this is all done yeah exactly i mean it's our job is to come up with creative design solutions to offer people more products so they can design special spaces that are different than everyone else's sure. you know, box with windows and, and stalls in it. Right, right. You uh, kind of add, add something to it and give it a little, yeah. a little more flavor, but you would still achieve the goal. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's where you have exactly that, the marriage of art and design, where yeah. it's like, here's the artistry of it, but it's also has to, has to have a function to it. Exactly. Yeah. How so, long have you been doing this type of work? I've been with this company for seven years. Now. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's interesting. There's a, uh, I mean, yeah, you never, you don't know the world exists until you're in it. Yeah. And it's, uh, it, it's large. I mean, you can't, you can't build a building, you can't complete a project without it. So, that's, it's, that's absolutely true. And like you said, it's like, it's a space that you fall into, which I feel like a lot of people in life kind of fall into the thing they end up actually doing. Right. They, they have a goal in mind and it's very rare other than like, I think like NASA, you know, <laughs> people don't, don't do the thing that they planned on doing when they were a kid. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Uh, oddly, I actually know a uh, NASA one. She, she retired, but I know a NASA engineer. Oh, that's amazing. She, uh, she said she had no idea how she ended up there. She, uh, she had moved from, um, Czech Republic uh -huh. and she's like I didn't know what I wanted to do she's like so I just applied for this job because I was applying for jobs and next thing you know she retires with the you know a, a full career with NASA wow that's amazing I love that that's amazing yeah so what did you study what did you want to do when you were bright-eyed and bushy-tailed you know going to college so I so I graduated high school and went right into industrial design okay so not not industrial engineering industrial design so that's sure. like the 
um, I like to define it as like the aesthetics of, of everything. Uh -huh. um, so you look at your phone and your phone has, uh, you know, a, a team of hundreds of engineers inside of it. Yeah. Um, but those engineers didn't really, very few of those engineers had any interest in the packaging. They would mm -hmm. design a piece or a component and they would say, uh, you know, here I did my part. Right. I designed my widget, um, you know, as, re as uh, requested by the scope. Sure. And you end up with a, you end up with a, a bucket full of widgets and then they go, cool, let's put it together. And you end up with, you know, the original Motorola brick. Right. And yeah. they go, yeah, this is great for starters, but we gotta get, we gotta get this smaller. And the yeah. designer comes in and says, okay, we can soften this, we can shape that, we can, you know, we'll, we'll just change some colors or, you know, the aesthetics of, of the product. Sure, sure. It's and a new technology comes out and this can be smaller than yeah. it was before. So people think of an artist as like, you know, generally you think of starving painter or graphic designer. Right. And then right, the the majority of working artists are people who are, uh, speaking of artists, that's a great house. The, um, oh. the majority of the working artists are like our industrial designers, really. Yeah. They, uh, they work in conjunction with engineers and product managers to, to make the products that uh, people want to buy and mm -hmm. the engineers make the products that people need or the solutions that people need. Sure, um, and you're, you're kind of putting it together to say this yeah. is this is going to be a product that people want. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like the the ID world is nice. I mean, it's, it's, it's very it's very creative and effective. Um, mm -hmm. But I didn't, I went actually started building race cars. Oh, race and cars. Then, wow. And then realized in the racing world that the decisions that I knew inherent to my hobbies and my you know, background and knowledge of things. I knew that these decisions were sound, but no one would listen to me because I, I had an art degree and not, <laughs> not um. an engineering degree. So I went back to school to be an engineer. So people on you know the uh, um, the engineering teams and the, on the race teams would, would listen to my suggestions. And uh, lo and behold, I ended up actually oddly back in more of the art world. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. So you went, you went and studied the artistry, and ended up in an engineering world. Then went and studied engineering, and ended up in the arts. Yep, exactly. That's that's <laughs> great. Yeah, I love that. So you were designing race cars. I was a I was a Indy car mechanic. Okay. So I, that's been a affliction of mine forever. Is wasting my money on cars and motorcycles and stuff. Oh, I like love that. that. My first car was a '69 Mustang. I'm oh, nice. I have a '68 yeah. Camaro right now. That's nice. Today makes me bleed and uh -huh. eats my money. Um, was it a Mach 1? Uh, it was not. It was just a, a standard 69, 302, V8. Okay. Um, yeah. 302 is a fun engine. It's a little little high river. Yeah, it was good. It was a good, you know. It's a good it was California just, car, too. It was great. Yeah, so I grew up out there. I got it from my dad. We bought it from an old lady for like 800 bucks. Cool. That's a good story. Yeah, and just worked on it, rebuilt it, refurbished it. Um, Did your dad then, do any of that? before was that just like a father-son hobby you guys picked up it was yeah he would do it on its own and then i kind of did a bit of it and then we both did it together um and then like when i was 18 he was just like here's the keys good luck and nice. that was it yeah so it looked kind of cool did and you sell it or wreck it um i i <laughs> threw a rod uh okay. on the engine in la and then it was like went followed me around to the different places i was at trying to get a new engine into it and then i took it back to his house in uh in northern california and that's where it was at and then I actually just recently gave it to my little brother. Oh, nice. So it's, you guys still still yeah, have it. Yeah, we still have it. Yeah, my dad passed away in uh, April, May. Mm. And so I was like, you know what? I was I was as old as my little brother was when he, when he was born. So I was like, here, you know, you lost your dad. We both lost our dad. So here's, here's this Mustang. Um, so he cool. has it now. But it was like, yeah, still doesn't have an engine. It's on blocks. It's been on blocks. Is he still so. in California? He is. Yeah, he's in California. And he plans on working on it, but you know, it's a bit of an inheritance coming his way, so he's probably going to do something with it. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So that'll yeah. Be good. Money, money always helps make a project like that. <laughs> that and that was really, and I just had a kid. I was like, I, I don't have any money to, to yeah. jump into this right now. I just can't. I can't yeah. afford it. There's like there's two kinds of car hobbyists. They're, they're the ones who I sort of align myself with this one, which is it's the it's the hobby less the like the actual success of the project <laughs> um like i uh, i'll say i'll just, I have a lot of sayings but one of them is you know don't get it right just get it done sure um so it's like get the project done and then when it breaks then you get to solve another problem and that's the engineering yeah. you get to solve another problem yeah um, and that's the fun in it for me it's like solving the problem and coming up with creative solutions whether they be fast cheap or good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but one of those is generally the right answer, and you can pretty much align yourself with one of those, uh, you know, three directions, and you get a second one as like a, you know, a, a tangent, tangential solution. Yeah. And then the third one goes out the window. So <laughs> exactly, that's you know, and that's that's my IT, uh, my career in IT has been exactly that: get the job done. And then do it better the second time. Exactly. You know, but yeah, that's show that's exactly progress it. first. Yeah, exactly. Don't, or was, don't let perfection get in the way of uh, progress. Uh, progress. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's exactly it. And um, it's tough to tell your in IT. I mean, you're an engineer too. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's tough to tell your project managers that they have to choose good, fast, or cheap. Exactly. Or, well, choose two. Yeah. Is what we would say. But. Yeah. Good, fast, cheap, choose two. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah, because they want all three, and you're like, that's not how yeah. this is. This is not going to operate yeah. that way. You're, Sorry. You're this. in that role because you don't mind sounding foolish asking yeah. for all three of those things. Exactly. And knowing you only get two. Yeah. <laughs> I, as the engineer, know that you can't. So it's just, that I've, I've been there. Yeah. Um, exactly. And then, yeah. And then growing up, you know, I lived in California. I grew up in L.A muscle cars don't go bad out there so no i mean i've had everything i had a 68 camaro i had a 76 camaro i had a 1967 um, amc javelin okay uh, yeah i had a ford ltd 72 ford ltd i had um gosh yeah, okay. what else so you you have the nova yeah you it's, have the affliction there yeah okay. exactly and that's how it was it was like oh i'll just get a car drive around la until it breaks down on me and then after a <laughs> while you just flip it and buy another muscle car so here's the question did you throw a rod because you were being a little bit of a hooligan or did you throw a rod because you just had you just had like a loose rocker and bad luck great question yeah so it was bad bad luck and me not keeping out a problem i knew i had uh, which okay. was that the oil cap would leak and so you would just have to keep putting oil in or eventually the engine would dry out and it and i just let it run without checking the oil and so it seized up and threw a rod oh bummer okay yeah so it's a hundred percent negligence. Yeah, that's that, that's a that's a worst case. Uh, yeah, solution. I wasn't even accounting for that. Yeah, one. yeah. Somebody who has such a uh, uh, a track a, a history, a track record of of having old cars. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would know. And that was, and that was exactly it. I was like, I should have known. I did know. I would every Thursday, every Wednesday, I'd check on it. And this was one where it was like, okay, it's Friday afternoon. I should be fine. I'm driving home, and all of a sudden, I'm like, oh man, this is yeah. something went bad, and that that was exactly what it did. Yep, yeah. And so I was like, okay, fine. And then um, I, I because that was my first car, I did want to keep it. I was going to convert it to electric, actually, which was going to be my goal. I th I thought about doing that to yeah. a couple of cars as well, but it's it is wildly expensive yes. to do that. Yes. Yeah. The car will last you. That means you don't have to pay the eight yeah. ninety five a gallon once it gets there. Yeah. But um but yeah, it uh yeah, it, it would have been a process. Which I think I still want to do. Like I gave my brother that one, but I'm gonna see if I can find another sixty nine Mustang frame and and do the conversion process. Uh, maybe I don't know when my kid's eighteen. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Trying to give me one second. I gotta call this no restaurant because yeah, I realize I'm ten minutes late already. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> Right. Just let I'll be there. It's fine. They, yeah. And that's I think reservations are like that, unless it's like a crazy busy place. But I think La Luna, there, yeah, there you're fine. So tell me about the the Camaro '68. What colors? Uh, so yeah, this is this is the. There's two pain points on this car. I've had this one for such a long time. I've dragged it around with me since I was 20, 19 or twenty. Nice. Something oh wow. like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it was actually the first old car that I ever owned. Okay. Um, so I basically bought the first thing I, could, I, I saw and I wanted and I could afford. Sure. So two things that I don't like about it. It's a convertible. Okay. And it was a beautiful rally green color yeah. that somebody had oversprayed with uh, like red with black SS stripes on it. So uh, it's like, okay. it's a total, I don't know. I, I don't know what color your, your cars have been, but I don't, I don't love the showy okay. red with black racing stripes, especially sure. on a... Uh, 327 car with a convertible top. <laughs> okay. <laughs> doesn't yeah. doesn't really. It's not the message. Okay. Uh, but it, it's a 350. It's you know it's like a 70s truck motor probably that ended up in there. Oh, um, nice. You okay. know the regular leaky rear main seal that every every you know early gen small block has. And, yeah. Um, it's a convertible car. It's uh, slammed to the ground. Totally inappropriate for Chicago. Yeah. Um, it was great for like East Coast whiny roads and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no AC, so can't drive it 
yeah. 340 <laughs> days out of the year. Oh, and, that's uh, funny, yeah. yeah, it's uh, it runs rich. It smells like fuel. It's really loud. Yeah, uh, and I love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you know what's funny? I, none of my cars had AC uh, in LA, and I would just roll the windows down. You drive fast, they cool you down. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> as long as you don't mind sweating, you're all right. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, that's how I always was. But uh, that oh man, that sounds like a great car. Yeah, and it sounds like it just needs a place with with weather where you could drive it around yeah. all day. That's kind of why I just keep towing it around. It's like a, we have like a romantic relationship where we need each other to stay yeah. alive, we keep, <laughs> we keep each other out of trouble. Oh, that's fun. So is that the only classic you've had, or do you pick up every other ones every now and then? No, I mean, there's been like little things here and there, but uh, right now it's just that and uh, a, uh, a couple of motorcycles that have both been hit by cars. So they're, oh wow. Chicago is is the out of all the places I've lived, it's the uh, the worst motorcycle city I think that I've ever been in. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, it's just it's not the not the spot. I've been I've been hit by more cars here in Chicago in like the first probably four years that I lived here than I have the rest of my life in wow. all the places I've lived. So. Well, it's good you're still walking and talking after that. So I yeah, mean, you know true. you count your blessings in that way. But uh, I have a day in my phone called uh, called Randall's Motorcycle Alive Day. Oh man! Because it was the last accident. It was uh, I, I was I was airborne, looking <laughs> behind me while oh. I was upside down oh, over the hood of a car without a helmet on. Oh. And uh, I uh, yeah I got up and I and I had a little scrape on my knee and I I walked away from it. But wow! Yeah, I got real lucky on that one. So yeah. That was, Hanging it up for uh, for Chicago motorcycle riding, but it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I could see that. What's nice is, I mean, when days like this, you can get out of the city and take it to like Indiana or yeah. someplace a little quieter, which would be fun. Again, you know, California, like you could split lanes, which is like one of the few places where that's legal. And I I, I know a ton of friends where you just like people aren't paying attention and they'll just clip your tire and your your bike's down, you got your leg broken. Yep. You know, and it's like, that's just so common. Yeah, that was, um, I lived yeah. in Hawaii for a while. And oh, it was nice. the same thing for, yeah. like, you would, splitting lanes was not legal, but it was totally yeah. uh, acceptable. Yeah. It's like, uh, that's what people think of it, yeah. Yeah, and people get real aggressive. They're, you know, they're in traffic and they don't want you to be ripping the benefits of traffic or ripping the benefits of motorcycle. And I've had people just kind of kick their door open yes. just to kind of oh. scare you, maybe not what? try to actually hit you. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's not. Aren't, people aren't friendly when somebody's I don't know well like we said misery loves company I'm that's stuck right. in traffic you gotta be stuck with me right that's right that's, exactly. and that's it so they open the door on you no that's boring yeah. no I'm always a give a wide berth because I pay attention because I've been there so it's like it's just what it is yeah. what kind of bikes were you were you riding so I uh, had a couple of different sport bikes okay the two that I have right now one's an old uh, sportster um that uh that one is unfortunately totally as well. Like you wow. have to get a rebuild titles from wow. some other state. Sure. Uh, and the other one is a uh, it's an old Honda, like early naked sport bike. Okay. Um, nice. from the early two thousands. But yeah. I, an indie car. I had some GP friends, and um, at the time I had similar proportions and weights to uh, to Nikki Hayden. So I had a friend who was on his Hayden Thrips old team, oh, okay. and so I have the front end off of like a, one of Hayden's old. Uh, Repsol race bike to like test wow. the front end and uh, all this weird, all these other weird performance things that I kind of did to it. So it's it's unsafe at all speeds because <laughs> it makes you act like a complete and total fool again. And it's yeah. So that's uh, that one is that one is capable, but I just it's just I'm yeah I'm a, I'm a bad pilot on that thing in the city. So as a commuter bike, it just doesn't doesn't get you from A to B. It gets you right. from A to trouble and then hopefully to B. <laughs> it's not, it's not, not the best. A to C to B. Exactly, but yeah. C is always drunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've had a few dirt bikes, sport bikes. Um, and then in LA, I had a Virago. Okay. The Yamaha is like yep. a 70. And that was really fun. They're a great little cruiser bike. Um, and you're always, just always working on it. And that was it. That's when I realized, okay, I have a Mustang, I have a Virago, I had an LTD. I was constantly, constantly like not having a reliable car, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's where I was like, Hey, and I had a job where I had to drive around all the time. So I was like, I got to get something that's, that's a little more modern to yeah. do that. Um, I actually thought about a job recently uh, in LA specifically because I felt like it would align with my desire to uh, continue 
my car hobby. Oh yeah. Oh, um, they're everywhere. They are everywhere now. Yeah. They don't go bad. They're everywhere. I know, and it's there's such a culture of yeah. like acceptance. Yeah. Um, almost so like I feel like some of the roads uh, get forked up because they know that people have cars that just don't soak up the the bumps yep. like a modern day vehicle. Exactly. Oh um, yeah. No, yeah. I highly recommend living in LA, especially if you're a car guy. It's, yeah. They're all over the place. Problem is, I just can't. I can't. It's just not my. Uh, it's not my speed. It's uh. Wow, look at that thing. Speed. Yeah. You seen the jets flying around? Oh yeah. yeah. I was looking at that boat. Oh okay. It's like a big, uh, big. I don't know. I want to call it a cigarette boat, but oh. it's a big, long, nice. like offshore racing boat. Those can be fun. I haven't done any boating actually at all, which I hear is another gearhead thing. If you like those, like it's it's a lot of fun. I, yeah, I mean, I you know I prefer friends with boats. <laughs> That's I, I don't I've never never driven a boat. I'm sure it'd be wonderful. Uh huh. Uh, but yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't really mess around with boats. I haven't I haven't got I don't have the uh, I don't have the financial comforts oh, yeah. for to be a boat person. Yeah, you know what? That's yeah. I'm I'm I think I'm in your shoes. I like friends with boats. I just don't have any friends. So yeah, same thing. <laughs> just, just, just full stop. Not well, even boats. <laughs> no boats. It's just like yeah. Well, I'm getting no friends. friends forget the friends with boats. <laughs> yeah, but someday, you know, just got to meet more strangers. Maybe we'll hang out at the docks and just say hi to people. I don't know if you want to be the guy who hangs at the docks. <laughs> I think there's some stigma attached to that that you might want to avoid. Oh gosh. Okay. Good to know. The dock guy. The dock guy. Yeah. yeah. Just hanging out by the gate all the time, asking yeah. if you want to hang out. Just, just being friendly. He's got beers yeah. and what's out. Yeah, <laughs> totally. It's too friendly. He's who knows what the, what's in those beers. Yeah, I don't trust this guy. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the adult version of candy for strangers. Oh, you're right. Yeah, beers. You're right. It's the new candy for strangers. Yeah, I guess it'd be uh, seltzers these days. That's like that's really the boat candy. That's true. Yeah, the white claws, man. Yeah. With the six or white claws, they're gonna do something bad. That's hilarious. I might have to write a joke out of that. That's very funny. Uh, how long have you been in Chicago? I've been here five years this time around. Okay. This yeah. time, so okay. I came out 2013, and then I moved back to California in 2016, and then back here in 2018. Okay. So now, yes, yeah, it's 2018. I've been out here, and I'm here until my daughter turns 18, and then I'm back in California. How old is she? She's nine and a half. Okay. Well, yeah. you've got some time. I've got a little bit of time. Yeah. How part of the city are you? In? Uh, I live in Edgewater. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I bought a house. Um, I'm like two blocks from the lake. It's a really nice, great area, great neighborhood. Um, so yeah, it's good. You know, it could be worse. Nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Complaints are that you can't live in LA. You're doing all right. <laughs> That's and that was exactly it. I was like, I want to make it seem as much as like I'm living in, in the Bay Area as I can and you're close to the coastal life. So I'm right there. You know, I've got a giant lake that looks like an ocean. So yep. it's, it's great. Yeah, it seems like you're ripe to be a boat owner. <laughs> you're close enough. Uh, right. You know, it's uh, you you could work from your boat. So you could there's probably some some tax incentive there that you can Oh. You can skirt it to be your your office or something like that. That's so smart. I hadn't even thought of that. That's so smart. I just had to get Wi-Fi on that thing. Yeah. And then you're a boat guy. And then I'm a boat <laughs> guy. Just live on a boat and just have live a boat. On yeah. <laughs> you've really you've really taken it to a different level quickly. <laughs> you know, if it's if I'm gonna be that guy, I'm gonna be that yeah. guy, right? Might as well just get the leathery skin, go hang out in, in Miami or something for a little while, <laughs> right? Just be that. Be the boat guy. Lake life is great, I think, but uh, in the winter, you don't want to be there anymore. So. And that's, yeah, that's exactly it. Especially now, like with boats, right? If you have them, you can run them on the lake until like September, and then you got to put them away. Yeah, well, there's you know. there's that one, there's that one, I mean, there's two buildings on the, like one's on like the north branch of the river, I think. Mm -hmm. And it was built with a, like a, a small marina underneath it. Oh, specifically, yeah. so you could keep your boat in the water year round. Yeah. Have you seen that? I think I know what you're talking about. You like close to downtown you, area. Yeah, if you do an architecture group, it's yes. not the one underneath I've, the steakhouse. Yeah. It's it's like on the north branch. Yeah, okay, yeah. I have seen that one. Yeah, I did the architecture group. Yeah. They point always point that yeah. out if you go up the river yeah. right there. Uh, yeah. They tell you that it's uh they keep the water like churning around it so it never freezes. Never freezes. Like that. Yeah, that's so interesting. Which I guess makes sense. You keep it in the water all year round, fine. 
you're still not driving it. You're not doing anything with it, but it is in the water technically. Yeah. yeah. But even like if you go out to the ocean, right up on the California, have a boat there, I hear you have to like clean it after every use. Like you can't just, because the rust, the salt in the water will eat oh. away at it. Yeah, I think if you're not running it a lot, yeah, you have yeah. to. That could be uh, They got it to keep it clean. All right, well, here you All are. Right. It was well, great thanks chatting. Thanks so much, man. Same yeah. here. Have a good one. You too, brother. Have a good day. Thanks. Don't forget about your uh, your hand buzzer back here in case oh, you need that today. I, I appreciate that. I might. Yeah. Thanks.